How much power can you make with a 128 cubic inch Milwaukee 8 engine? Today on EMP Cycle Works, we're going to find out. Basically, it's all going to start with our cylinders, heads, and cam. This is the, the majority of, of what we got going on here. Uh, fuel motor supplied the cylinders and the pistons. Uh, they're at 11 and a half to 1 compression. Jim's performance of E Twins did the heads for us. Uh, springs, deck the heads, ported and polished. Um, we're not going to run a, a, a base gasket. We're trying to get this thing to close to a 12 to 1 as we can. And Jim Performance also supplied the M, what is this, the M839B cam for this package. So hopefully, you know, the goal is over 160 horsepower, and uh, we're going to see if we can do it. Let's go. Today we're starting from a torn down position here. Everything's clean and ready to go. Uh, we get started by installing the oil pump O-rings and the cam plate O-rings. Putting some assembly lube on the backing part of this SNS oil pump, the foundation of our, our build here. We just got to make sure we index it into the O ring that we just installed. And there it goes snapping in. Now, assembly lube on the outer rotor and on the inner rotor. And this first rotor, uh, you can see that it has a little relief cut in it. Now, that relief goes in towards the engine. Next up, our dowel pins go in, and then the separator plate, which we oil with assembly lube on both sides. Next up, our main pump body here. Uh, I'm going to make sure it's got plenty of assembly lube in it, and then install the the inner rotor here. Um, the gear can go either which way. Uh, it doesn't have a relief cut in it on this one. And then we'd make sure that it's indexed properly into the pinion shaft and onto the dowel pins. And once it goes in, it'll go in real easy. And then finally, the pressure side of the pump goes in smooth as butter. And now we got to make sure that it's flush with the cam plate mounting surface. I can't protrude past it. And now I make sure our assembly lube on our brand new M839B cam from Maxell. Make sure we get plenty of assembly lube on that. And make sure it spins freely. Clearance isn't really an issue. And then make sure we have plenty of assembly lube on our cam plate as we install it. And double check and make sure our O-rings are still there. Real easy. Now it's time to make sure our piston to bore clearance is good, or where it should be. These are already set up, but you always have to double check. So here I am measuring the piston and transferring that to a dial bore gauge. And now I can stick that dial bore gauge in the bore of the cylinder on the thrust thrust surface here and making sure that our clearance is what it should be and and yep it's two and a half thou pretty perfect ideally I want to do this with torque plates but I don't have any here so as long as as long as we're close uh, these are already set up so I'm just basically double checking what was already here Now I'm just double checking the fit of the rings. So I install the ring and square it up with the piston and just double check and make sure that the gap is what it should be. Um, every cylinder is going to be different. Every piston is going to be different or piston manufacturer. So just double check with your piston manufacturer and get that correct ring gap. And I'm just oiling up these pistons and mocking them in for now. Um, I want to get the installed deck height of them. And now I take old piston pins with the head bolts and, and just snug them down. Put the cylinder at top dead center. And then measure the the deck height, in which case it is 14 thou. And then now I'm uh, pouring the heads uh, to measure the, the dome volume or the CC chamber of the, the heads. 
like I said in the beginning, we're trying to get to 12 to 1, so I'm just making sure that everything is what it should be and running no base gasket. We should be pretty close. It's a good pour, no air bubbles, so right on. So now we're going to Loctite the cam plate bolts and the oil pump bolts. Uh, I know fueling cam plates don't want don't want uh, Loctite here. Um, SNS does though, so I'm going to hand tight the cam plate bolts first. And then spin the wheel a couple times. Uh, the motorcycle is in sixth gear here, so I can spin it around and move the crank. So we're trying to center the oil pump here, so I will hand tight um, A and B on the oil pump, spin the wheel, and then hand tight C and D on the oil pump here, and then spin the wheel again. So the whole goal here is to center up the oil pump, and then I'm going to torque in sequence the cam plate bolts, spin the wheel again, I'm going to torque A and B on the oil pump. spin the wheel and then I'm going to torque C and D and our oil pump is centered and our cam plate is installed. Spin the wheel a couple more times just for just to make sure I don't feel any binding. Now with our cam shim on we are going to check with this new cam we're going to check that our our spacing here is correct that our chain is going to be nice and straight. So I'm going to use the rear brake and, and snug these down, snug these bolts down, and then put a straight edge across. And in this case, it was a little bit, it was like 20,000, so I put a new shim in, and now it's, it's pretty much zero. I was trying to get a measurement. Uh, so I think it was like 1,000 or a thou and a half or so, something like that. It was really, really close. So now ready to install the chain. And... So with it being in gear, you can use the rear brake to, to torque them down. So we're going to go to 15 foot-pounds on both of these bolts, then break them loose and go one turn out, one turn back off, and then retorque them 24 on the pinion shaft and 34 on the cam sprocket. And spin the wheel again just to make sure we don't have any binding here. And then I'm also going to spray some engine oil on this assembly and then blue Loctite on the tensioner bolts and we're going to snug them up and torque them to 10 foot-pounds and then spin the wheel again to make sure there's no, no binding or anything. Uh, new gasket on our cam cover, blue Loctite on the bolts, snug them down. Just hand tight and then torque everything to 10 foot pounds. And they're done. All right, now since we got our gaps all filed, we're going to assemble these. Um, I'm going to add in a, a chart here on how uh, the orientation of these rings. Uh, you want to stagger the gaps, and there's a certain way to do it. Um, it's kind of hard to explain just without having something visual. And when I recorded this, when I videoed it, I did not really show what I'm doing. I just kind of did it. Um, you know, I record these videos as I'm working. So it's, you know, spending more effort on making sure I'm doing everything correctly as opposed to getting the best shots. Um, you know, I try and try my best here, but it's working out so far. So I guess I forgot to video putting in the lifters. Um, these lifters were already installed. Um, these are SNS lifters that I had previously installed when I did a cam in this bike. When I took them out, I marked them uh, which which lifter bore they went in and the orientation. So basically, they just went in back in where they were. And here I I'm getting these bolts in. I'm like, oh man, I don't have. I don't have anything protecting my open uh, spigot holes here in the case. Anything can fall in there, so it's always a good idea to have rags, um, 
or something protecting those holes. You don't want just anything to fall in there. I guess the worst case would fall in there or, some, or something fell in there and you didn't know about it. That would be bad. So since we're not running any base gaskets, here I am using maroon scotch Brite to clean the deck surface as best I can. And then I wipe it down with uh, lint-free rag and brake cleaner to make sure there's no oil or anything. So we're going to be using uh, gasket sealant. Now we use assembly lube on the, the small end of the rod, the piston pins, and the piston pin bore. Now I installed the clips, I thought, on the left side of these pistons. Uh, make sure you oil. I use a, uh, engine oil on the piston rings and on the cylinders. Make sure you get the skirts really good and the rings really good here. Now these pistons do have an orientation to them. Uh, the valve pockets for the intake are much bigger than the, than the exhaust, so we got to make sure we get them in right. Here I have the piston pin clip already installed on the left side of the, the bike. So as I install the piston, the larger valve reliefs are facing the middle of the engine. And here, when I installed the pin, I didn't notice that or I, I didn't I didn't account for the bigger reliefs being in the intakes so when I get it in that's why I had to do it from that side because I already had the pin retainer in and so we get the clips in and this is where it's really important to have those rags and the spigots because if those pins fall in there uh, they're a pain to get out especially if it goes flying you don't know if it went in the engine or somewhere else so uh, ARP Ultra Torque on the studs here. And now I'm going to use my trusty band clamp ring compressor to install these cylinders. So I'll lube them up really good with engine oil. And now I have three bond 1211 on the, the bottom of these cylinders on the gasket surface. Uh, we're not running any gasket here, so um, this will boost up our compression to just, just to where we want it. And it's just making sure that we don't dam or don't disturb that, that gasket sealant that we put on there. And it's just a very, very thin layer, just the same as you would use um, assembling cases. So... Now I'm checking to make sure the gasket sealant is still in good shape and there's no oil on the surface here from the piston on the deck surface. Now we carefully push the piston down. And we're good. Now get our ga um, head gasket in. Our Cometic head gasket, this is a 30 thousandths head gasket. And I have a lot of oil that's scraped off the cylinder and it's on top of the piston there, so I'm making sure that's clean. Um, that can cause, if you have too much oil in there, it can cause it to hydro lock when you first start it, and that's no good. We get our cylinder heads on, put oil on the bolts, and we're going to snug them up. Or just just lightly lightly touch them with the uh, the um, snap-on ratchet and then we got 10 foot-pounds 20 foot-pounds and then 30 foot-pounds in order and now we're gonna back them all off one full turn and these torque specs are, are specific to these comedic gaskets in this kit so make sure you follow your instructions for the kit then final torque is 10 foot-pounds, 20 foot-pounds in order. Here's me doing it in the order. And then 20 foot-pounds, 30 foot-pounds, 35 foot-pounds, and final torque of 42 foot-pounds. The front cylinder stacks the same exact way. Uh, here's the Jim's Performance V-Twin manifold installed. Damn, that's nice. So I'm snug these bolts down. 
it's nice to do it without the rocker boxes on. You can really get to those bolts with a ball Allen. New gasket, and then we're using a 64 millimeter Screaming Eagle throttle body here. 64 millimeter seems to be the best for making power uh, with this 128 combination. Make sure we get our electrical connections connected. Get our lower rockers in. Uh, I always use Harley, those green Harley gaskets there. Uh, for some, for whatever reason, aftermarket gaskets seem to leak. I don't know why. Um, I've seen it a couple times, so I just always stick with the Harleys. I never had them leak. So these rockers can be kind of tricky. You got to have get one side down. Um, on the side of the springs in this case it was towards the front and then the, the back side will just slide over you can't really just put them down squarely uh, this the valve springs get in the way blue loctite on the fasteners and I took them to two steps to 120 foot pounds so I go 60 foot pounds first and then a final torque of 120 again just to try to minimize the chance of a, a leak here Then we get our pushrod tube O-rings installed, lowers, and then the uppers, and then we make sure we put the, the O-rings on the middle pushrod tubes as well. Shout out to JBA Custom Cycles in Fort Myers, Florida for the sweet hat. Um, they do all kinds of uh, pretty cool big wheel baggers, uh, great audios, check them out if you're in the area. And then we got our SNS adjustable pushrods that I will install. Here I'm checking top to center. The push rods will go up and come down. Once it comes down, we can adjust our push rods. And then we will lube up our rocker arms. Uh, I like to fill the fill the shaft up with oil till it comes out the the holes where the, where it um, sprays onto the the valves. Blue Loctite on this the shaft, the rocker arm shaft bolts and they get torqued to 24 foot-pounds. Now we adjust them first by setting zero lash so we turn it out the push rod out until it doesn't move anymore and doesn't have any up and down play and then it's four full turns so SNS has four flats on the inner push rod tube so we turn that 16 flats and then we lock down the lock nut. This is the intake, then we do the exhaust the same way. And as soon as we can spin both push rod tubes, then we can spin the motor over and get to top dead center and do the front. Here I'm just installing the top rocker boxes. A blue Loctite on the fasteners, new gaskets, and torque them down to 13 to 15 foot pounds. I'm going to jump ahead, uh, get all the rest of this put together, and start her up and see how she sounds. This thing's going on in the dyno this week, and we should see the horsepower numbers. Can't wait. Thanks for watching EMP Cycle Works. Thanks for watching me build this 128 Jim's Maxell M837, excuse me, M839B cam, 12 to 1 compression, Chromeworks exhaust. Like, follow, and subscribe. Thank you.